Um, so this is going to be a nice review of mostly Unit 10, but there will also be some Unit 8 and 9 in there. I'm going to go pretty quickly, so feel free to rewind me if you need to. All right, so in this first part, what I'm asking you to do, the typical question that we asked in Unit 10 was first to draw the Lewis dot structure, and then for the following compounds, decide what intermolecular force it was, decide which was stronger, and then which one had a higher boiling point. So the first thing you need to do in order to draw a proper Lewis dot structure, um, you need to, let me get my ink ready, you need to determine how many um, valence electrons there are. So when you count it up, because um, Br has 7, that's 21, since there are 3 of them, plus 5 is 26. So I've got 26 valence electrons, nice and easy. Then what you need to do is draw it out. So you're going to have P bound with three BRs. So BR here. Hold on one sec. BR there, BR here, and BR here. So my computer's taking a second to get used to me writing on it again. Okay. Now, the important thing for you guys to remember, once I've drawn these, they're set in stone, but now I've used only two, because this represents two, two, four, six valence electrons. Now, every compound except for hydrogen needs to have eight valence electrons around it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw lines to represent the, the lone pairs of electrons. Guys, I would prefer that you do, did draw dots, sorry, but unfortunately with this program it's really hard to draw um, dots. So I'm going to draw lines instead, which represent two valence electrons. So on BR it already has two, so it needs four, so two more, four, six, eight, now it has eight, it's happy, two, four, six, eight, now it's happy, four, six, eight, now it's happy, and P, phosphorus, has two, four, six, and it needs two more. Now, if I count these up, it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. I've used 26. I'm happy with that. That looks perfect. Now, this compound is polar. Remember, it's trigonal pyramidal. Um, there isn't something up top pulling. Um, there isn't another BR, so therefore it's polar. Um, P is going to move if these are all pulling on it. Therefore, since it's polar, this intermolecular force is dipole-dipole. All right, the next one I'm going to move along. HBr, there's a total of eight valence electrons. Check that if you don't agree with it. I'm going to start drawing this. I'm going to connect H and Br together. Remember, H only needs these two, so I'm going to leave H alone. Now, Br has two already. It needs four, six, eight. Now, Br is happy. Now, since this is polar, right, there aren't, they're not pulling with the same force. This is polar but it's not between H and F, O, or N, it's between H and Br, therefore this intermolecular force is going to be dipole-dipole again. Now, to determine which one is stronger between these two dipole-dipole, they're not the same strength. Within dipole-dipole, right, the smaller the compound is, the strong, sorry, the smaller the compound is, the stronger its intermolecular force. So therefore, HBr is going to be stronger and I'm not going to write this, guys. You need to write it, though. The reason why, you need to say why, it's because it's smaller. Okay? Write why, or else I'm going to have to take points off on your test. All right? Therefore, which has a higher boiling point? Well, HBr does. All right, next one. We're going to start picking up the pace. Now, NO2, if we just look at NO2, guys, that has 17 valence electrons. But because it has a plus one charge, it's going to have 16 valence electrons. So pause this at any point if you have any issues with that and go back and check it yourself. Now, I'm going to draw this like this. Honestly, it doesn't matter how I draw it. If you notice, if you try to draw this out, guys, and fill this in with 6 around O, 4 around N, and 6 around oxygen, you'll be using 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. That's way too many. If I use too many valence electrons and I can only use 16, I know I'm going to have to be using a double bond. And in fact, for this one, you're going to have to use a double bond here. And you can, you'll check it again, getting rid of um, valence electrons around oxygen and nitrogen, but that's not enough. You'll need to double bond the other one as well. And then when I fill this in, oxygen still needs four valence electrons. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 
14, 16. Notice nitrogen now has 8 around it. So if you look at this the way I drew it, I initially kind of drew it as bend, but if you notice, this is going to be linear. Oxygen is pulling with the same force that the other oxygen is pulling. There are no uh, unshared pairs of electrons on nitrogen. Therefore, this is nonpolar. Therefore, this is going to be London dispersion forces. Next one, nitrogen. There are going to be five, sorry, five valence electrons for nitrogen, therefore a total of 10. So when I draw this, N and N, this should look familiar. This is from your test. If I just had a single bond, I'd be using 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. That's way too many. So if I double bond it, then I need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Still too many. So I'm going to triple bond it. Okay, 2, 4, 6. So I need two more electrons here, two more electrons here. Remember, the line represents two. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I'm good to go. Now notice this is also LDF. So when I'm comparing LDF and LDF, now this time, the larger the compound is, the stronger the intermolecular force. So obviously, guys, NO, NO2 is bigger than N2. That should be pretty obvious to you. We're not having to look at trends on the periodic table now. So which one's going to be stronger? Well, NO2 is. Why? You guys write because NO2 is bigger, which has a higher boiling point, NO2. Good. Done. CCL4 should be pretty easy. It has a total of, well, carbon has... Um, I believe four. I don't have my periodic table in front of me. Chlorine definitely has seven. So when I draw it, guys, you can check yourself. It looks like this. CL, CL, limited in space. You aren't. So make yours look prettier than mine, please. So this is two, four, six around chlorine to make that eight. Two, four, six, two, four, six. 2, 4, 6, so I've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Should have been 32 valence electrons. Check yourself. Now, notice, CL's pulling this way, this way, this way, this way. All right, so therefore it's going to be LDF. Okay, because it's nonpolar. This compound's nonpolar. Now, for H2, you should have two valence electrons. H2 just looks like that, nice and easy. It's obviously going to be LDF again. Now, LDF, the larger compound, is a stronger intermolecular force. Therefore, it's CCL4. Guys, make sure to explain why. Don't make me take off because you don't write that. Then, which has a higher boiling point, the one that's stronger, so it's CCL4. Awesome. Next one. You can pause me if you need a break. HF has eight valence electrons. Therefore, it's going to be HF. F needs to have two, four, six around it. There's the total of eight. Notice this is going to be between H and F. This is a polar compound, therefore that's going to be hydrogen bonding. Next one, for NH3, it should be a total of eight valence electrons. So when I draw it, it's going to look like this. H, H, and H. Two, four, six, eight. Okay. Um, this is also polar. It's between N and H, which is hydrogen bonding again. Awesome. Now, which is stronger? For hydrogen bonding, guys, remember, N is the weakest, O followed by F is the strongest. So F is here, F is the strongest, so H, F is the strongest. Guys, that's in your notes. Okay, it's N, then O, then F, not opposite of phon. Okay, and therefore the higher boiling point is H, F. All right, next one, CCL3. Um, oh, no, sorry, H2O first, my bad. Okay, for H2O, guys, at this point, you know it's 18, not 18, my brain, sorry. Um, it's eight valence electrons. Um, hydrogens only need two. Oxygens needs a total of eight, so two, four, six. That's two valence electrons, eight. Obviously, this is bent. That means it's polar because it's between hydrogen and oxygen. It's hydrogen bonding, easy peasy. Now, if we look at ClO3, um, you should notice that there's a minus one charge. This is really important. Um, this, I, I believe ClO3 originally had, so oxygen is um, six, so it originally had 25. Since it's a minus, it now has 26. Because if it has a minus charge, that means it has one more electron, therefore it's going to have 26. So this is what it should look like. O, O, okay, 8 around oxygen, 8 around that oxygen, 8 around that oxygen, CL has 2, 4, 6, now it needs 8, and I've used 26. 
This is again trigonal pyramidal shape, which is polar. It's not between H or F or O or N, therefore it's dipole-dipole. Remember that hydrogen bonding is the strongest. It's stronger than dipole-dipole. Dipole-dipole is stronger than LDF, but right now we're just comparing hydrogen and dipole-dipole. Therefore, hydrogen bonding, the H2O is the stronger one, and you can just say that hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole in your explanation, and that's all you need to do. Okay? So, which has the higher boiling point? H2O. Good, you're done. All right. For conversions, we're flying through these. Um, I'm in five atmospheres. I need to go to KPA, so I'm going to put five atmospheres here. Crisscross swoosh. Okay. KPA on top. You're going to put one atmosphere on bottom. One um, and 101.3 KPA. Okay. If you take five atmospheres, you want to multiply it by 101.3, and what you get is 506.5. Okay, KPA. Next, ah, sorry guys, my pen. All right, the next one, you want to convert 205 KPA to millimeters of mercury, crisscross swoosh, you put millimeters of mercury up top, okay, and then you put KPA on bottom. Remember, there are 760 millimeters of mercury, for every 101.3 sorry KPA. So 205 divided by 101.3 times 760. The order doesn't matter, but you end up getting 1,538 millimeters of mercury. All right. The final one, 550. Okay. Um, you're in millimeters of mercury. in atmosphere, so atmosphere is on top, millimeters on bottom, one atmosphere for every 760. You flew through these, pause me if you need to, but you get 0.72 ATM, don't forget units, don't make me take off. All right, next page, pause me if you need a break. We're working on phase diagrams, which should be a nice break from all of this difficult work. The phase diagram I gave you, here's a rough sketch of it. Really rough, sorry. Um, a is going to represent um, your solid. B represents your liquid. And C represents your gas. Um, so that's A, B, A, C, B are your answers here. In the first one, it says at 0.75 and 20 degrees Celsius, what is your phase of matter, guys? So you're at 75. Okay, and 20 degrees, it was, it's approximately right here on your graph, you are a solid. For the next one, if you just follow it along, you're at one atmosphere, and you're at 65 degrees, you follow it, and you're right at the liquid phase. So if you go from a solid to a liquid, that's just melting. And you need to say melting, you can't just say solid to a liquid. I can't give you partial credit for that. All right, next one. If you're at 0.75, um, not 0.75, sorry, I can't read, 0.5, to 60, um, so you're at 0.5 and 60, you are a gas, that's what I got, and then at 0.75 and 60, you are a liquid, okay, notice guys, um, I'm going to go back really quickly, notice here that this is 8, this should be 7 to prevent any confusion, and this should be 7, and that should be 7, I wrote that on the portal, sorry about that, all right, so you're going from a gas to a liquid there, that is called condensation. All right, next one. You're going from, you start as a, um, when you're here, guys, you can check it out yourself. Do it yourself. I get solid. For the next one, I get gas. So when you're going from a solid to a gas, it's sublimation. Okay, so those are the types of questions I that I would ask for um, a phase diagram, nothing too crazy challenging, all right? And since I'm running out of time, I'm going to do the um, unit 8 and 9 stuff on a different video for you guys.